this video, I'll introduce you to Zem Outlook Bar, which is a part of NetAdvantage for WPF line of business. Using Zem Outlook Bar, you'll be able to create navigation experiences similar to those in Microsoft Outlook. So let's take a look at the capabilities of Zen Outlook Bar and how it can help you set up advanced navigation in your application. So let's start by dragging a Zen Outlook Bar from the toolbox into our window here. So what I'll do is I'll set the height to auto and I'll also set the Vertical, vertical alignment just tracks to make sure that also remove any any margins as well to make sure that our outlook bar stretches for the entire visible area of the window. So let's see how we can customize the Zen outlook bar to use it in our application. So the first thing we can do is uh, we can set a theme. For example, we can set Office 20. 2010 blue, office 2007, black, blue, and silver, and also the infratistics theme. So for this sample, we'll be using the office 2010 blue. So this give a, gives us um, an appearance similar to that in, in Outlook. So we'll just, we'll just keep that. And the initial sample that we start with, uh, the Zen Outlook bar is set up with two groups. So if we'd like to add more groups, uh, we just need to click the Smart tag here, and we're presented with a number of different options, adding groups containing uh, different controls inside. So this is a group with, with a grid control inside. This, this isn't uh, a data grid. It's, it's just a grid layout element. Uh, we can also add a group which contains a tree, a, a group which contains radio buttons, and a group which contains a calendar. Uh, using these two links here, we can control the amount of buttons that are visible by default and just to make sure that we don't clutter the UI and also uh, present some of these options uh, neatly in the bar down here. So let's run uh, the sample here now and let's see the, the UI that we've generated. So this is the UI we've generated. These first two groups were built by the uh, Zam Outlook Bar automatically. And the third one, we added ourselves. ourselves. This is the, uh, the group which contains tree control. Or that's group four. It contains radio buttons. And group five contains a calendar. So we can expand and collapse these. And we can also minimize the entire ribbon. This behavior, we can also activate by default by setting one of the properties um, of the exam outlook bar. So let's just quickly just give you an idea of how to uh, how to set that. So allow minimize is selected and this basically allows us allows the user to minimize uh, the uh, the exam outlook bar to the left. Let's now quickly remove some of the groups we won't be using. And let's take a quick look at the XAML that the designer has generated for us so far. So we have the XAML Outlook bar, all the layout properties we set, a few groups, each containing expanders, list boxes, trees, and so on. Of course, you can you can set your own controls here. Uh, you don't you don't need to use list boxes or tree views. You can uh, you can put in your your own user controls in here. Something that's very important for, uh, for an outlook bar is its ability to bind to data. Because very often, the, the groups and items you will be presenting to your users wouldn't necessarily be static, but rather they would come in from a database depending on, for example, the user's permission to see certain groups or items. So I've created a sample which illustrates the XAM outlook bar bound to, to data, uh, which allows it to, to build on the fly its groups and items. And I will now paste this code into this sample, and we'll take a look at how it's built. So let's now take a look at how a bound XAM Outlook bar looks like. 
Okay, so what we're seeing here are two groups containing items which are generated from a bound data source. So let's take a look at the source code and see how you can data bind your exam outlook bar to create more flexible, a more flexible application being able to adapt to different requirements. Let's take a look at the XAML first. So what we have here is a XAML outlook bar which binds its group source property to the data context of, of this window. So the data context here contains task groups. And task groups are an, an observable collection of task group objects, which is set up as, as shown here. So a task group basically contains a, contains a title and an image. So once we, once we create all these task groups, we add different tasks to them. So a task contains just a text and an image. So a task group has a text and an image, and it consists of tasks, which also have text and an image. So this is the code where we set up the task groups containing a number of tasks each, and we're referencing some images that have added to the solution. So at the end, this returns two task groups, each containing four tasks to be bound to the XAM outlook bar. So how does the XAM outlook bar know which properties to use to bind to um, the title and the image properties. So let's take a look at the style here we've declared targeting the Outlook bar group. So the content is bound to, to the tasks collection in, in the group. The content template is bound to the item template static resource. The header of the Outlook bar group is, is bound to the title property of the Outlook bar group, and the image is bound to the image property. So let's take a look at the template that's used to display the tasks in each Outlook bar group. So the template is defined here, and it's basically a list box which is bound to the tasks, and it, it basically sets the template property of, of the style of this list box to contain a stack panel which which then contains a number of different items whose template is shown here. So each item is basically visualized by a stack panel which orders two elements, an image bound to the image property and text block bound to the text property. So basically this allows us to produce a number of groups, each containing different tasks, which are represented by image and text. So using this binding functionality, you're able to produce flexible navigation experiences, which are both easy to use and also easy to maintain. Infragistics. On the web at infragistics.com.